Eat equality of career opportunity at USAID. Refocusing gender equality on women, children, and families. Instead of protecting women's and children's unalienable human rights and propelling their ability to thrive in society, past Democrat administrations have nearly erased what females are and what femininity is through gender policies and practices. For instance, these administrations have diluted USAID's focus on assisting vulnerable women, children, and families around the globe by adding protections for an ideological advocacy on behalf of progressive special interest groups. USAID now aggressively promotes abortion on demand under the guise of sexual and reproductive health and reproductive rights, gender equality, and women's empowerment and advocates for those who claim minority status or vulnerability. Families are the basic unit of and foundation for a thriving society. Without women, there are no children, and society cannot continue. As evidenced by the confirmation testimony of now Associate Justice Ketan G. Brown Jackson, the progressive left has so misused and altered the definition of what a woman is that one of our U.S. Supreme Court justices was unable to delineate clearly the fundamental biological and sexual traits that define the group of which she is a part. USAID cannot advocate for and protect women when they have been erased globally along with the values and traditional structures that have supported them. The next conservative administration should rename the USAID Office of Gender Equality and Women's Empowerment, GEWE, as the USAID Office of Women, Children, and Families, refocus and realign resources that currently support programs in GEWE to the Office of Women, Children, and Families, redesignate. The Senior Gender Coordinator is an unapologetically pro-life politically appointed Senior Coordinator of the Office of Women, Children, and Families, and eliminate the more than 180 gender advisors and points of contact, embedded in missions and operating units throughout the Agency 9. In addition, the next conservative administration should rescind President Biden's 2022 gender policy and refocus it on women, children, and families and revise the agency's regulation on integrating gender equality and female empowerment in USAID's program cycle 10. It should remove all references, examples, definitions, photos, and language on USAID websites, in agency publications and policies, and in all agency contracts and grants that include the following terms, gender, gender equality, gender equity, gender diverse individuals, gender aware, gender sensitive, etc. It should also remove references to abortion, reproductive health, and sexual and reproductive rights and controversial sexual education materials. In the past, the word gender was a polite alternative to the word sex or term biological sex. The left has commandeered the term gender, which used to mean either male or female, to include a spectrum of others who are seeking to alter biological and societal sexual norms. The promotion of gender radicalism is anathema to the traditional norms of many societies where USAID works causes resentment by tying life-saving assistance to rejecting the aid recipient's own firmly held fundamental values regarding sexuality, and produces unnecessary consternation and confusion among and even outright bias against men. The next administration should ensure that USAID's goal and service of its mission is to help protect and propel all members of society women, children, and men from conception to natural death. To do so, USAID's Office of Women, Children, and Families should strive to ensure that communities have their basic human needs, without which they will be unable to thrive met first and foremost. Basic human needs include equal and safe access to potable water, sanitation, food, education, health care, houses of worship, justice, pregnancy and family resource centers, working capital, electricity, technology, and business opportunities. The Office of Women, Children and Families should implement the Geneva Consensus Declaration on Women's Health and Protection of the Family and prioritize partnerships with local organizations, including faith-based organizations, FBOs. Protecting life and foreign assistance. Protecting life should be among the core objectives of United States foreign assistance. Shortly after taking office, however, President Biden issued a memorandum that reversed a myriad of pro-life policies and revoked the Protecting Life and Global Health Assistance PLGA, policy, widely known as the Mexico City policy. Biden also restored funding to the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA, which supports and implements China's coercive abortion and sterilization regimen. PLGA requires foreign NGOs, as a condition of receiving assistance, to agree not to perform or actively promote abortions as a method of family planning in foreign countries. Previous pro-life presidents beginning with Ronald Reagan applied these conditions to family planning assistance, but President Trump for the first time expanded the Mexico City policy to protect global health assistance furnished by all departments or agencies, estimated to be $8.8 .8 billion annually. The Biden administration restored abortion subsidies to pro-abortion NGOs including Planned Parenthood International and MSI Reproductive Choices. In reversing PLGA, Biden declared a radical assault on the policy of protecting life, choosing instead to promote abortion on demand around the world under the guise of sexual and reproductive health and rights. USAID's priority of funding the global abortion industry negates programs that promote life, women's health, and the family. Even under PLGA, several loopholes allowed support for the global abortion industry to continue. 
international NGOs that perform and promote abortions overseas like Population Services International, Pathfinder, PATH. The Population Council, and Gender Health and Woman Care Global International continued to receive funding from USAID under PLAGA and now, under Biden, receive tens of millions more in U.S. taxpayer dollars in foreign assistance annually without any oversight. When the United Nations Secretariat promoted abortion and abortion, inducing drugs under the umbrella of sexual and reproductive health as an element of its COVID-19 Global Humanitarian Response Plan in May 2020, the exemptions in PLAGA for humanitarian aid and multilateral organizations illuminated another loophole in the policy's effectiveness in safeguarding U.S. taxpayer dollars from being used to promote abortion. Pro-abortion groups also have received funds under other categories of foreign aid that fall outside the scope of global health assistance, including women-related and economic assistance programs. Members of Congress have advocated closing these loopholes by extending PLAGA to all foreign assistance through the Protecting Life and Foreign Assistance Act, sponsored by Senator Mike Lee, RUT, and Representative Virginia Fox, RNC. Point 11 Current law in the Foreign Assistance Act gives the President broad authority to set such terms and conditions as he may determine on foreign assistance, which legally empowers the next conservative president to expand this pro-life policy. To stop U.S. foreign aid from supporting the global abortion industry, the next conservative administration should issue an executive order that, at a minimum, reinstates PLAGA and summarily blocks funding to UNFPA but also closes loopholes. By applying the policy to all foreign assistance, including humanitarian aid, and improving its enforcement. The executive order to reinstate PLAGA should be drafted broadly to apply to all foreign assistance. It should simultaneously rescind President Biden's memorandum entitled Protecting Women's Health at Home and Abroad, issued on January 28, 2021.12 The new pro-life executive order should apply to foreign NGOs, including sub-grantees and subcontractors, and remove exemptions for U.S.-based NGOs, public international organizations, and bilateral government-to-government -government agreements. All entities funded by USAID, both directly and indirectly, should report their compliance with the PLAGA, and USAID should institute penalties, including debarment from future federal funding, for violations of it. The new executive order also should instruct the administrator of USAID to publish reports on implementation of the PLAGA by both prime and subprime recipients. In addition, the Helms Amendment should continue to be applied, as it has been by both Republican and Democratic administrations for more than 50 years, as a complete ban on the use of taxpayer dollars to pay for abortions abroad. International Religious Freedom Conservatives believe international religious freedom is central to USAID's development efforts. President Trump's Executive Order 13926 on Advancing International Religious Freedom 13 instructed the Secretary of State, in consultation with the USAID Administrator, to budget at least $50 million a year for programs that advance international religious freedom and ensure that faith-based and religious entities, including eligible entities in foreign countries, are not discriminated against on the basis of religious identity or religious belief when competing for federal funding. Under the Trump administration, the agency set up a senior-level chief advisor for international religious freedom who reported directly to the administrator. With the task of coordinating a whole of USAID approach to achieving this priority, it created a robust genocide response capability. USAID affirmed the agency's partnerships with faith-based organizations through its rule on participation by religious organizations in USAID programs, 14 partnership guidance and answers to frequently asked questions, FAQs, for faith-based organizations and legal guidance and answers to FAQs for USAID staff. Today, USAID officials and their progressive partners have resisted efforts to promote religious freedom, especially as it relates to abortion and gender ideology, which are anathema to the traditional societies where USAID funds programs, in addition to many U.S. taxpayers. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken repudiated his predecessor's focus on religious freedom. The next conservative administration must champion the core American value of religious freedom, which correlates significantly with poverty reduction, economic growth, and peace. It should train all USAID staff on the connection between religious freedom and development, integrated into all of the agency's programs, including the five-year country development and coordination strategies due for updates in 2025, strengthen the mission's relationships with local faith-based leaders, and build on local programs that are serving the poor. Congress should appropriate funding to USAID specifically to support persecuted religious minorities. In line with Executive Order 13926. Streamlining Procurement and Localizing the Partner Base USAID is a grant-making and contracting agency that disperses billions of dollars of federal funding in developing countries through implementing partners, such as UN agencies, international NGOs, for-profit companies, and local non-governmental entities. In rare instances, such as in Jordan and Ukraine, the agency provides direct budget support to finance the operations of host country governments. USAID far more often counts on expensive and ineffective large contracts and grants to carry out its programs. It justifies these practices based on speed and a lower administrative burden on its institutional capacity. 
Partnering and procurement reform was a pillar of the Trump administration's effort to secure better development results, cut costs, and advance the journey to self-reliance strategy of exiting countries from aid. In December 2018, USAID launched its first acquisition and assistance strategy to streamline procurement processes, introduce innovation into its programming, and diversify its partner base away from large, expensive, and partisan implementers. The strategy counted on local NGOs, including faith-based entities already on the ground, to provide the agency with less costly and more effective alternatives to the aid giants. The strategy also prioritized global partnerships with the private sector corporations, investors, diasporas, and private philanthropies the source of real capital investment, innovation, and efficiencies that can maximize the impact of taxpayer dollars. Under the Biden administration, despite rhetoric to the contrary, the aid industrial complex has recaptured the agency and stifled further reforms. The next conservative administration should immediately implement language on key policy topics as standard provisions in all grants, cooperative agreements, and contracts. These provisions should include language on implementing the policy on protecting life and foreign assistance, imposing conditions on funding to multilateral organizations, and increasing accountability and transparency. To ensure that USAID exercises its existing authorities to streamline procurement processes, the next conservative administration should name a political appointee as the agency's senior procurement executive and director of the agency's Office of Assistance and Acquisitions, OAA, in the Bureau of Management, M. The head of M slash OAA is one of the most important positions at USAID, as the office is ground zero for controlling the disbursement of U.S. foreign aid. The White House should empower the administrator and his or her designees to make determinations concerning the scale and scope of awards and increase the transparency and accountability of SUB awards, which can escape public scrutiny and promote progressive policies during conservative administrations. USAID should use existing authority to use program funds to expand its roster of contracting and agreement officers to accelerate the delivery of funds for disaster responses to a more diverse collection of implementers. Accomplishing the next conservative administration's policy goals at USAID will require that political appointees have knowledge of, responsibility for, and visibility into the design and awarding of grants, contracts, and cooperative agreements. The administration should restore the senior official accountability. Review, SOAR or create a similar process to ensure that proposed programs above a certain dollar threshold in total estimated cost slash total estimated amount receive a close review by policymakers in each bureau and office and, for large awards, in the agency's front office. Localization is a buzzword within the aid community but correctly assumes that more funding through local organizations produces better aid outcomes. Shifting From giant U.S. based implementers has proved difficult to achieve, however, given intense internal bureaucratic resistance, opposition from the aid industrial complex, and foot-dragging from progressives, who view local NGOs especially faith-based NGOs prominent in Africa and Latin America as obstacles to promoting abortion, gender radicalism, climate extremism, and other woke ideas. The President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFAR, has shown that localization at scale is possible within a short time span. Over the four years of the Trump administration, the multi-billion dollar program increased the amount of funding dispersed to local entities from about 25% to nearly 70% with positive overall results. This model should be replicated across all of USAID. In addition, the next conservative administration should expand use of the new partnership initiative, NPI, to every bureau and office, reset the requirements for USAID's overseas missions to craft and execute NPI action plans, and assign each mission a minimum percentage of its portfolio that must go to new, underutilized, and local partners. Crucial to the strategy will be increasing the use of open competition. That lowers barriers to entry and fixed amount awards that carry less of a compliance burden along with eliminating cost plus reimbursement contracts that favor large companies. Before advancing a new program, the agency should be required to assess existing local activities to avoid undercutting or duplicating them. At every opportunity, USAID should build on existing local initiatives. Global Health The United States is the world's largest funder of global health initiatives. For more than 60 years, the American people have offered health assistance to the world and saved millions of lives. The USAID Bureau for Global Health, GH, the second largest within USAID, oversees a multi-billion dollar operation to support maternal and child health, voluntary family planning, PEPFAR and the President's